All right, today's we're picking up the uh, outboard from Kevin's boat motor and repair here in Paralyon. Ready um, to come in and uh, take a look at the motor here. If the lanyard's not attached, it's not gonna start. Or if it's in gear, it's not gonna start. Smart choice with the uh, electric start, by the way. Yeah. I mean, they're not hard to start, but still, it's just a lot nicer to push the button. So now that I'm in neutral, make sure that I'm that this mark right here is lined up with the start mark. Right. Push the button. Woo! There she is. Three to five seconds, it's illuminated. It goes off. Okay. Now you can put it in here and go ahead and go. I just let it warm up a minute or two. Yeah. Like Simple. Uh, All right. Is this your first outboard? That's what I want to ask everybody. Yes. Or, okay. Yes. Whether it's a two stroke or four stroke, it's your first outboard. That I'm using, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've been around them before and used them before. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. Um, so we will start on this side. And um, of course, in order to tilt the motor, you'd have to bring this down is locked okay especially when you go in reverse it won't kick up mm -hmm. but when you bring it down then it can tilt okay and higher okay now to bring it back down flip it and bring it back down now what type of boat are you putting it on? It's a John boat, 16 footer. Okay. So are you able to lift it from the front? So instead of like getting into the water or how, how does right that Right here is where you lift it. Okay. Do not lift it from here. This is not a pry bar. If you do lift it from here, it will break. If okay. If you break it due to force, Tahatsu won't cover it under water. Right. Okay. So that's, that's the biggest thing right there as far as tilting it. Now they do make an apparatus that has a handle on it that grabs it like this and tilts it that way. So you'll get used to it. Right. Now there again, if you hit something, it will kick up and come back down. Of course, you're not supposed to hit things, but that's that's beside the point. We are in shallow water. So because of that, you can hit or impact different things in the water. It's something that you'll get used to. But this pin right here adjusts the attitude of the boat. Okay. So the lower it's down, the more the engine's tucked under, the easier the boat planes. Okay. The more it's, but then it pushes the front end down. The more out it is, the harder it is for the boat to lay over. But once it does, there's less boat in the water. Therefore, you're able to go faster. Okay. Okay. So this is a good starting point right there. It really depends on load and water conditions more than anything else. But that's that can be adjusted if you watch a few YouTube videos. They talk about it into into better detail. Okay. Which brings to me the mind that this is the clamp brackets right here. Right. Now I always recommend that it get through bolted onto the transom. Okay. So I I have a jack plate that's already installed. I'm not sure if this is gonna fit the the jack plate that's already on the John boat. Sometimes you have to put a spacer in here. Yeah. Because depending on how is it a hydraulic jack plate or is it a manual? Manual. Jack plate? Okay. Yeah. Well, the one back, one good thing about a jack plate is, is when the water comes off the back of the boat, it doesn't come off like this. It comes off in a wave. Okay. So because of that, you can usually mount the motor higher the further the motor's back. Okay. So the jack plate is four inches or whatever. So you can put this even about two inches above the bottom of the boat. Okay. Okay. If you did not have a jack plate, this right here would be even with the bottom of the boat where the boat V's down. Right. Or as close as possible. You don't want to be below it or you want to be two inches above it. At okay. Maximum. Okay. Okay. But since it's already going to be set back, go on ahead and put a straight edge in there. You don't have to be precise as long as it's close. Okay. Okay. But and you can do paint sticks underneath here to raise it up or raise it down. And then once you get it to where you want it, then you can drill the holes and mount it to the jack plate permanently if that's what Okay. Do. All right. Oil drain is right here. It's for the engine oil. All right. This sticker, of course, says that when it's under transport, it needs to be laid on this side. 
Okay. okay. It is a four stroke. It does have oil in it. It's right. Like taking your truck and putting it on its side, the oil wants to come out. So lay on the other side. On the other side. Okay. The little, there's the handle on the on the ground. There's the motor. Yeah. Basically, the more tilt there is to it, the less likelihood that oil will seep out or into one of the cylinders. Got it. This is the gear lube. This is a gear case right here. It is a sealed gear case. So you have to use marine gear oil, which is non-foaming. You can use Tahatsu, you can use whatever brand you want as long as it's marine. You would remove this screw, and then this screw right here, it drains out. Then you have to pump it or fill it from the bottom until it comes out of the top. Okay. You can't, if you try to put the screw in here, put oil in here, you'll only get an ounce or two in there. It won't be near enough oil. The, the gear case will burn up. Okay. Okay. Because that's where the gear shafts and bearings are. Coming on around. Well, this is the water intake screen right here. You want to make sure there's no grass or debris or anything else on there. You can flush it from here, but I prefer to flush it from the side. Uh, that's just my personal preference. Okay. Coming on around. Come on around to the back. This right here is where you would lift it. Right. Of course, when you're carrying it, there's a handle in the front and a handle back here. Okay. It weighs approximately 100 pounds. There again, this is the side where these bosses are, where the handle is. So that tells you that's the side it wants to be laid on. Right. Okay. This is the freshwater flush right here. It's a standard garden hose fitting. Put it in there, put it on the water, start and run the engine. Uh, you don't have to, but you get a better flush if you start if you let it start to warm up. Okay, so this turn is, turn the water on, then the engine. Yeah, always. Okay, always. all right. Always running that way. Got it. Once again, this, there's some grease fittings on here that need to be greased once or twice a year, one or two squirts, something like that. Okay. It comes pre-greased, so it's not a big a big deal there. This is the tiller handle right here towards the front of the motor. This is the overboard switch. Yeah. Now we can pull this until our arm comes out of the socket or hit the electric start as much as we want to, but it's never going to start because the, the ignition is now put to ground. So this has to be attached. You can start and run the engine. You can turn the engine off, push the red button, or remove the lander. Okay. And the engine will die. Throttle is right here. The rabbit and the tortoise. That start, or and then slow, and then gradually to go faster. Okay. If you wanted to hold it at a certain speed, like right there. Yeah. This is a little tensioner right there that holds it there. But remember, now it has more tension on it. So in an emergency situation, you're not going to have as much control over it, especially if your hands are wet. Right. So only use that sparingly. That also, you have a tensioner for the steering. The steering now moves very easily back and forth. Right. So if I want to put a tension, a little bit of tension on it there, if I wanted to kind of go in a straight line and hold it, then I would do more like that. And okay. That puts more tension on. It. And then also when you're transporting, you want to lock yeah, it in place like that. Yeah, kind of lock it there yeah. in place. Um. Okay. Tiller handle here goes up and down. Another grease fitting right here that gets greased, just like these right here one or two shots once or twice a year is all it takes okay when it's in forward it will not electric start or pull start it has to be in neutral okay and it will also electric start but if it's in reverse once again it won't pull start okay or electric start so it's neutral and then start right yeah that's the this is gear the shift yeah. right here that's neutral right there. We'll go over that outside in a little bit. Okay. This right here is an oil pressure light. All of this is also in the service main or in the owner's manual, so okay. it's not it's not that big a deal. The light will illuminate three to five seconds, meaning that there's not oil enough oil pressure present, so the light goes out. Obviously, when you're driving the boat, you're not going to be looking back here at that little light. So if it sounds funny, makes a weird noise, rattles a little bit, turn around. If the light's illuminated, turn the engine off. Pull the cover off, check the engine oil inside of it. Okay. This is the electric start button right here. And then as far as the uh, battery for the electric start, um, what do you recommend? You can use a large battery like a 24 series, similar to a large battery like that. Uh -huh. Or you can use a lawn and garden battery, but no lithium ion batteries. Okay, no lithium. The charging system on the engine does not recognize it. 
Uh, Tahatsu has a service bulletin out saying that could cause overcharging or undercharging or excessive heat, could catch on fire, all that other kind of good stuff. Okay. If you are gonna run it pull start or manual only, you don't wanna lay these in the bottom of the aluminum boat because now that's electrolysis happening. Right. So tape it back, zip tie it back, something like that. Okay. Just, just to keep them from, because it, because when it starts now, you know, not only do you have, uh, you have, um, it, once it starts, because it is electric start, they also have a charging system. So it has an alternator it on there. It has a small alternator. Okay, so it'll charge the battery. Big, but it does, have, it. it does have a small alternator on there. Okay. Okay. We're going to go on ahead and remove the cover. Just a simple latch like that. It has a little hook in the front. So you go forward from there. This hook right here yeah. has to go into that hook, corresponding hook right there. Okay. Okay, this is the, where am I at? Uh, electric start solenoid right here. This is the fuse for the electric starter and also for the charging system. If you push that out, it has a little cover and inside of there are two 20 amp fuses. So if for whatever reason the electric start doesn't work, mm -hmm. maybe the battery cables touch, something like that, pop this out, check your fuse, there's a spare one in there. Okay. You should keep spare ones on board anyway. This is the uh, interface I use for uh, downloading anything that the engine computer might store in it. Okay. Oil filter right here. All right. Oil is right here. It does have a thermostat right back behind here. Rectifier regulator turns the AC current back to DC current to charge the battery back up. Fuel filter here. Okay. It has a red ring in it, meaning that if water is present, it will float. Gas weighs approximately six pounds a gallon. Water weighs eight. So if this is up, that means there's water in the fuel system and it has a pet cock or a little drain down at the bottom. Okay. Okay. And then this uh, does not have like an hour meter, a meter but the... Uh, I saw on YouTube that you can buy like an hour meter and then hook it up to the spark plug right here, right? Exactly. And it, Just wrap it around the spark plug wire. You can hook it up right here to this wiring. You can hook it up to this hook right here. Okay. It really depends on what you want to do. With it. Okay. We put them on the six horsepowers all the time. But yeah. There's also a little area right here. You can put it. This would be if you had power tilt. You'd have an up solenoid and a down solenoid. Got it. Okay. Coming on around two spark plugs. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. This is the mechanical fuel pump right here. This is the oil fill right here. Engine lifting eye, if you wanted to lift it rather than lift it and carry it around. From out of the mechanical fuel pump, it goes to the vapor separator tank right here. And that has a small fuel pump inside of it, about the size of my thumb. So you never want to run the, fuel, the engine out of fuel because not only does it pump the fuel, but a byproduct of pumping it is heat. If it runs out of fuel consistently or continuously a hundred plus more times, then the pump will overheat. If the pump overheats, then of course it's not going to pump like it's supposed to. Okay. Two fuel injectors, number number one and number two. If they never need to be cleaned, unplug them, unplug them, remove the two screws, pop them out, send them off, have them cleaned, put them back in there. This is the fuel pressure port right here. Let's me know, or anybody that's working on it, if there's fuel pressure present in the in, in from coming from the electric fuel pump. Here. All right. Engine oil level is right here, so we will remove the dipstick. Everything is level on the engine itself, perpendicular to the ground, or even with the ground, leaving with the horizontal. We'll install the dipstick back in there. We'll move it out again, right there at the dot. Okay. Want to be but that would be low. That would be add anywhere from that dot to that dot You're good. is good. Okay. Exactly. Be careful not to overfill it. And then uh, Danielle was saying that uh, 10 W40 uh, or blend. yeah, or 30, right? Uh, I think I, I think that's in the service manual. Tahatsu yeah. has. This is what Tahatsu uses. So. 1040 synthetic blade. Okay. And that's what we use. This is the throttle right here. As I advance it, that's wide open throttle. Mm -hmm. And that would be idle or stop right there. Mm -hmm. The electric starter is in the front right here. 
And then, of course, we have two battery cables right here. Okay. Fuel connector is right behind this dust cover right there. Okay. And that's it. Okay. So, uh, anything to, I need to do, like, to specifically for the first time starting it, or just hook it up to the battery, hook it up to... The, um, the biggest thing is, two, two things happen. And, uh, and then once again, this goes over it in your service manual. I mean, in your owner's manual. I keep saying service manual. Owner's manual. You don't want to run it at continuous speed for hours on end. Right. For the first 10 hours, you want to bury the throttle. The other thing is, is that they don't want you to run full throttle for continuous periods of time. Right. Now, I don't mind running the engine full throttle to get the boat up on plane. Yeah. Once it's up on plane, you can always back it back down. Half throttle, three quarters throttle, two thirds throttle, back down to five eighths throttle, something like that. Okay. You want to bury it especially for the first three hours okay after that you can pretty much do whatever you want okay yeah that was uh danielle was saying like the breaking period is basically three hours yeah that's yeah. That's, that's what they they're really you know some people follow the, there again the breaking period that is strictly how can i say it uh that is their recommendation now yeah i have some people that just take the motor and they just run full throttle all the time, idling and wide open throttle. I have right. other people that follow it. You know, there's a chart in there and they follow to the it tea. religiously. Yeah. So it's really up to the owner. I kind of use it as a guideline more yeah. than anything else. But the hardest the motor works is before the boat breaks over. Okay. So get it over up on plane and then go from there. It is a standard garden thread, garden hose thread. Okay. This is a flushing, it's just an adapter. Okay. Okay, for a quick release. Now, if you lose this, this is important, put something in there. You could even take this, unscrew, of course that wouldn't be on there, screw that in there and then turn the valve off. If right. you leave this open, not enough cooling water will get to the engine and it will overheat. So okay. use some. if you lose this, it doesn't have to be this plug, but until you get a replacement plug, put something in there. Got it. Okay. Hold your finger in there, whatever. <laughs> it don't matter. We're on a well here. We have 40 to 60 PSI at all times. I don't need that much water pressure for this engine. Now, if I was putting the, the garden hose on there, I'd probably flip it backwards three to five times and then screw it in. Okay. okay? That way you don't have any kinks in the hose. I'm gonna grab a fuel tank. And I'm gonna grab a battery. Quickly, can you tell us uh, how long you guys been in, in uh, business and uh, your location, Kevin? I have been, well, this location, I've been here eight years. I've had uh, Kevin's boat and motor. My previous location was Telephone Road and Newport Boulevard, but I've been in business 31 years. And this is in uh, Pearland, Texas. Correct. Yep. Attach the, of course you get a hose in a tank. Right. We're gonna squeeze the bulb a little bit. Be sure you edit out all the bad stuff. Out <laughs> no cuss words, right? Yeah, make those 50 pounds. <laughs> and a lot more hair, so. The biggest thing is when I turn the water on, I want to see water come from out of the water intake screens. We talked about those earlier. Right. As long as there's water coming out of there, you can run the engine as long as you want. The thing about running them on the on the flusher, like this, is water's a lubricant. So once I add water pressure to it, when it's clamped on there, it gets slippery. Okay. It wants to move back and forth. Then you add the vibration of the motor. It, it might could, move. It could slide off. Yeah. It could slide forward. It could do lots of different things. So you flushing port is better. Yeah, it, yeah. You really have to stand there and monitor it if you're going to use the. Uh, the flushing adapter on the lower unit. Right. Whereas this, you put the water on there, you're done. Makes it super simple. As far as flushing, um, how long would you recommend? 
Summertime, about five to ten minutes. Okay. Get back from the water, maybe five minutes. Motor still hot, it's hot outside. Yeah. I'm just going ahead. Now winter time, could be fifteen or twenty minutes. Yeah. On, um, on how uh, how cold it is outside, and how cold the water is. Now the next thing is um, you do want to run it approximately once a month. Okay. It's a pretty closed system. Um, it's not like a carburetor. Yes, some air is introduced so that gas can go in there. Yeah. But for the most part, it's a pretty closed off system. So because of that, you don't necessarily, it doesn't really evaporate and leave a residue or turn bad because it doesn't have a lot of contact with air. It has very minimal contact with okay. air. But once a month, once every two months, bring it out, hook the water hose up to it, put your uh, fuel tank on there. This tank, watch out takes a lot longer to go bad because yeah. it's three gallons whereas this is ounces of fuel on top of that okay and then so for for that three gallon tank like approximately what the distance i can or like usage time it depends you know it depends on if you're tighten up the trailer ball robert it's loose the uh depends of course wide open throttle is going to use a whole lot more yeah now you don't normally water conditions normally weather conditions things like that you can't run wide open throttle all the time right unless you want to abuse the boat and use the motor yeah so most of the time you're going to be half a throttle three quarters throttle something like that the other thing is is that everyone says well you know how long can i go what can i do i have people come in all the time that bring their boat in and say i've got 500 hours on my 10 year old boat think so you probably have 150 something like that sure enough they might have 50 they might have 75 because you're out all day but you're not running the engine all day right so it i mean the three gallon tank if you're using it a bunch maybe only one weekend but to be honest with you it should last you two or three months oh really wow how, yeah because of how efficient it is that's amazing again, the more throttle you give it the more fuel it's going right. to use that's just part of it. Any like fuel additives that we should avoid or uh, add you, you, or uh, recommended? Use whatever you feel comfortable with. Use whatever grade fuel you like. This is all set up to run on E10. Some people like to run uh, super unleaded because it gives you a longer shelf life. Some people like to run ethanol free. It's really designed to run on regular gas. Yeah. But since regular gas goes bad pretty quick, you could use whatever fuel stabilizer you want to use. Air on the side of more rather than less.